We are coming up to 12.15, so I'm going to turn it over to Jim Lowry. Uh, the presentation is, floor is all yours. Opportunity to present. Can everybody hear us okay? Yes, yeah. we can hear you fine. Thanks. Okay, very good. We're going to load our PowerPoint. We're going to do a couple of slides just to let everybody know a little bit more about our company. And, uh, and then we'll get into the demonstration there uh, in a little bit. Yeah, can, can everybody see the slides? Yes, we can see the slides. Okay, very good. Uh, again, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, our company, Global Security Systems, and uh, let us share a little bit about our voice and text-based emergency notification system. little bit about our company. Uh, we were founded back in 2003. Uh, our first customer was actually a statewide FM RDS system that we did for the state of Mississippi. Uh, that went live back in 2006, and uh, it's still running strong today. In fact, uh, we were receiving messages on it uh, all day yesterday with the bad weather. Uh, we've got over 200 customers, uh, emergency management customers, ranging from states to local governments, uh, counties, parishes, uh, universities, tribal nations. Uh, the basis of our company's technology is a satellite-based network, uh, RDS network, that we call GSSNet. Uh, currently, GSSNet is deployed on over 400 radio stations in the U.S. and Canada, and we've got uh, some demo stations uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, we're in the process of building out a nationwide uh, FM RDS network uh, of over a thousand stations. Uh, we're in the process of doing that as we speak. Uh, earlier this year, we launched a smartphone app uh, that we've got uh, in excess of 55,000 users uh, right now. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, again, our company is called Global Security Systems. We refer to ourselves as GSS. Uh, we provide a complete line of voice and text broadcast based emergency notification systems. Uh, the technology is based on the, the satellite backbone of GSSNet. Uh, it's expandable as project scope and budget permit. As we said earlier, we've got capabilities of doing smaller projects, maybe for one county, that might involve, say, two radio stations, and then all the way out to a state system that might involve uh, 100 plus stations. What we're really here to talk about today is Alert Studio, which is our cat based message origination portal. Uh, we talked a little bit about what GSSNet is, and uh, if you, you might hear me refer to our system as Alert FM, which is what we call our overall alerting system. Mark just put the uh, IPAWS uh, infrastructure diagram. We show this uh, kind of in our view as a broadcast, captive broadcast. On the left side of the diagram, you've got uh, Alert Studio uh, pushing out to either uh, FEMA's IPAWS uh, aggregator, or in our case, to uh, GSSNet, um, and then out to the broadcast uh, dissemination capabilities, which would then go out over TV, radio, or other dissemination paths. Alert Studio is our cat-based message origination portal. Uh, it's web-based, so you can access it from any device that can, uh, that can uh, uh, leverage or access the Internet. That includes tablets, phones, uh, laptops, what have you. Uh, we completed the CAP conformity testing back in 2011, and Alert Studio supports multiple contact paths. Uh, our Alert FM RDS receivers, which allows customers to push out messages to specific uh, FM receiving devices. Uh, GSS Net uh, EA, uh, Direct EAS allows our customers, in most cases state uh, emergency management agencies, to push out messages to specific uh, radio stations and TV stations to support uh, EAS. It actually allows them to kind of go around the traditional daisy chain. Uh, as I mentioned, our smartphone app, uh, we're going to show you here in, in a second the uh, IPAWS capability of WIA EAS uh, has collecting COG to COG. We also support social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. SMS, email, and then we've also got the capability to link with other systems uh, via a published API. Our satellite, one last slide, our satellite network actually allows our customers to go from Alert Studio 
up to our satellite broadcast network and then down to specific radio stations. Uh, if it's an EAS or a voice message, uh, that message would go out over an NDEC or other decoding device out to radio and TV. Uh, if it is a text or an RDS message, it would go out to specific alert FM receiving devices. And then our last slide is on our app. Uh, this is an app that customers or individuals would download to their uh, iPhones or Google devices uh, to receive information. It's based on an award-winning uh, weather platform and it also allows uh, local or state EMA organizations to push out messages to the phones within 15 seconds. So it's a really neat uh, learning tool. We're going to go ahead and move into the demonstration. Um, first thing we're going to do is flip over to our Alert Studio site and uh, log in. And as we said, it's web-based. Yeah, can everybody see the website, presumably they can. So we're going to go ahead and, and log in. As we said, web-based, uh, password protected. One of the fundamental tenets of Alert Studios, we tried to create it to where it's, it's got a nice, clean, customer-friendly interface. Uh, we know uh, lots of our customers don't get on the site every day. Sometimes they, it might be a little bit of time before they, they use it. So we want to make sure it's an intuitive interface that uh, if they're looking to send out a message, uh, it, it, it's nice and crisp. First thing we're going to do with our uh, scenario is go ahead and acknowledge that we're connected to iPaws. Uh, we're going to move over and click the link. And uh, as you can see, to get acknowledgement, we've seen uh, that the iPaws ping was successful. Uh, you also can go in and, and look at your COG ID. And then also uh, you can see when the expiration or when the COG uh, is set to or the certificate is set to expire. We're going to go ahead and, uh, with the scenario, create an alert. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've got the other capabilities, FM, uh, app, et cetera. We're going to go ahead and, uh, as the scenario dictates, select our first three iPaws contact paths. And if you'll notice, uh, the contact paths on the left are actually being highlighted, which shows that, you're, that we're going to populate data. First thing we do is we go in and we enter our basic alert information. Uh, we can modify uh, the message expiration date if we need be. We're just going to go ahead and cut and paste uh, based on the scenario. Um, we, we're going to put in the description and uh, instruction. go back. There we go with our instruction. There we go. Uh, we're going to go back up to our alert options. One of the things that we can do is we can modify the alert options for each of our customers. So uh, we can actually include all, all event types or if a customer wants to have a reduced number of event types that's applicable to only them, we can support that as well. We've got all the cap specs uh, as we see below. I'm going to go ahead and do a copy and paste for the WIA. Notice we've got a character counter that uh, when we do the copy and paste, it'll, it'll change. So there we go. And uh, switch back and go over to our has collect. Uh, when we're going to keep it at 15 minutes. Uh, one other thing we've got on attachments, this is, uh, say you've got an EAS scenario where the governor, wish, maybe the governor's off-site and he wishes to he or she wishes to uh, have a voice recording of his or her uh, of his or her her own voice. We've actually got a dial-in number that you can that they can call in, do the voice recording, and then it automatically gets pushed into Alert Studio. We've also got the capability in the case of an Amber Alert to add a file, picture uh, picture file, MP3 or JPEG. Uh, so if you wanted to include a picture of say an, uh, of the abducted child, you could do that. Uh, with the scenario here, we're going to click on our mapping function. We've got the capabilities to draw various polygons, et cetera, and support that. Uh, what we're also going to do, though, is in the scenario, we're just going to copy and paste the lat long coordinates and draw the polygon. 
zoom out a little bit so we see what's going on. And uh, there we go. And uh, so all of our data for our messages are loaded in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go to our review and send. So you actually can go see what messages, what contact paths, what area, headline, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're going to go ahead and send the message. And uh, that's immediately going to take us to our message history, which we can now look into. And uh, we should be able to see the message has been passed on. I So uh, so that works uh, works fine. 